Have you ever wondered how that smooth, creamy butter on your morning toast is made? It's a staple, a classic, a beloved ingredient that graces our tables in various forms. From the velvety spread that makes our bread taste better to the rich base of countless gourmet dishes, butter is, without a doubt, a marvel of culinary delight. But what goes into creating this creamy wonder? How does it come to be? Well, brace yourself for an enlightening journey on butter making. Before we delve into the process, let's take a brief look at the history of butter. Butter's story begins, over 10,000 years ago, with the domestication of animals. Early civilizations, realizing the nutritious value of milk, began to experiment with it, leading to the accidental discovery of butter. The process? Quite simple, really. Over time, as they transported milk in containers made from animal skins, the natural churning during their journeys led to the formation of this delightful substance we know as butter. From the ancient Sumerians to the Celts, butter was a culinary and cultural cornerstone. In ancient India, butter, or ghee as they called it, was considered sacred and used in religious rituals. The Romans, on the other hand, viewed butter as a medicinal product, using it to soothe burns and injuries. Fast forward to the Middle Ages, and butter became a sign of prosperity in Europe. It was during this era that the first butter churn was invented, revolutionizing the production process. Butter's importance continued to grow, and by the 19th century, it had become a staple in kitchens around the world. Butter's journey from a humble milk byproduct to a beloved ingredient is truly fascinating. Its rich history is as varied and complex as its creamy, indulgent taste. Now that we have an idea about butter's rich history, it's time to understand how it's made. At the heart of butter making is one simple ingredient, milk. Now, not just any milk will do. The quality of the milk is crucial in determining the quality of the butter. It's a pretty simple equation, really. Better milk equals better butter. But what kind of milk are we talking about? Well, most commonly, cow's milk is used. However, butter can also be made from the milk of other animals such as goats, sheep, yaks, and yes, even camels. The type of animal and its diet can significantly influence the flavor and texture of the butter. When it comes to cows, those that graze on lush green pastures tend to produce milk that's richer in flavor. This, in turn, leads to a more flavorful and creamier butter. So while it might seem like a simple ingredient, milk plays a significant role in the butter making process. So it all begins with milk, but how do we get from milk to butter? The transformation from milk to butter happens through a process called churning. Now, this might sound complex, but it's actually quite a simple and fascinating process. Churning, in essence, is the agitation of cream, which separates the butter fat from the buttermilk. So let's break it down. When cream, which is high in fat, is agitated, it causes the fat molecules to stick together. As they clump together, they form a network that traps other ingredients like water and air. This network is what we know as butter. The liquid left behind, once the fat molecules have been gathered, is buttermilk. Now, you might be wondering, how was this done in the olden days? Well, traditionally, the process of churning involved a device known as a butter churn. This could range from a simple wooden barrel to a large mechanical device. The cream was placed in the churn and then agitated either by hand or by some form of mechanical effort. This agitation would cause the fat molecules in the cream to stick together, forming butter. In today's modern world, the process of churning has become a lot more automated. Industrial churns, which can process thousands of litres of cream at a time, are now the norm. These machines use centrifugal force to separate the butter fat from the buttermilk, speeding up the process and making it more efficient. But for those who prefer a hands-on approach, there's still the option of making butter at home. All you need is some heavy cream in a jar with a tight-fitting lid. Simply pour the cream into the jar, secure the lid and then shake. After about 15 to 20 minutes of vigorous shaking, you'll have fresh homemade butter. So, whether you're using a traditional wooden churn or a modern industrial machine, the process remains the same. It's all about agitating the cream to separate the butter fat from the buttermilk. After the churning, we have butter and buttermilk, but we're not finished yet. Next, the butter undergoes washing and working. Picture this. After our butter has been churned and the butter fat has been separated, it's not quite ready for your morning toast just yet. There's still a couple of steps to go before we reach buttery perfection. The first of these is washing, 
Now, you might be wondering, why in the world would you wash butter? Isn't it already clean? Well, the washing step is not about cleanliness, it's about flavour and shelf life. You see, after churning, the butter is still mixed with buttermilk, and while buttermilk is delicious in its own right, it can cause the butter to spoil faster and can give it a somewhat tangy flavour. So the freshly churned butter is washed with cold water. This helps to remove the remaining buttermilk and any residual whey. It might take a few rinses, but eventually, you're left with pure, clean butterfat. But we're not quite done yet. The next step is working the butter. This is where the butter really earns its stripes. The working process is all about texture. It involves kneading the butter, much like you would knead dough. This kneading process helps to evenly distribute the moisture, creating that wonderfully spreadable consistency we all know and love. And it's not just about consistency, it's also about appearance. The working process helps to achieve that beautiful, bright yellow colour that is so distinctive of butter. This is because the working process helps to distribute the carotene, a natural pigment found in the cream, throughout the butter. So after all this washing and working, what are we left with? Well, we're left with a product that is a culinary staple across the world. A product that has been loved and utilised for centuries. A product that elevates every dish it touches. After working the butter, we're left with the creamy, smooth butter we're familiar with. It's been a journey, hasn't it? From the humble cow to the churn to the washing and working process, every step has been a labour of love, and the result is truly something special. And that, my friends, is the beauty of butter. While our butter is ready, here are a few fun facts about butter making. Did you know that it takes a whopping 21 pounds of fresh cow's milk to produce just one single pound of butter? That's a lot of milk for such a small amount of butter. And speaking of cows, the average dairy cow can produce enough milk in her lifetime to make a staggering 4,000 pounds of butter. That's enough butter to make a lot of toast happy. Butter has not only been a staple in our diets, but it's also had its place in history. In the Middle Ages, butter was used as a form of rent in Europe. Imagine paying your landlord with a few pounds of butter. And here's a bit of trivia for you. The country that consumes the most butter, that would be France where the average person consumes over 18 pounds of butter a year. That's a lot of croissants and baguettes. And finally, a fun fact about the colour of butter. Ever wondered why butter is yellow? The yellow colour comes from the beta carotene found in the grass cows eat. This beta carotene is transformed into vitamin A in the cow's body, which then ends up in the milk, giving butter its distinctive golden hue. Isn't it fascinating to learn about the effort and process behind our everyday butter? Let's quickly summarise the butter-making journey we've embarked on today. It all begins with fresh milk, the most basic yet most crucial ingredient. This milk, collected from cows, is left to sit, allowing the cream to naturally rise to the top. This cream is then skimmed off to begin its transformation into butter. Once the cream is collected, it's time for the churning process. This involves agitating the cream until the fat globules stick together, separating from the buttermilk. It's a fascinating spectacle, watching the liquid cream morph into a solid mass. Following the churning, we move on to the washing and working stages. The newly formed butter is rinsed with cold water to remove any lingering buttermilk, ensuring the butter won't spoil. After it's washed clean, the butter is worked or kneaded, further refining its texture and consistency. We've also learned some fun facts along the way. For instance, did you know it takes about 21 pounds of whole milk to make just one pound of butter? Or that the colour of butter can change based on what the cows are eating? And with that, we've come full circle from fresh milk to the final product, ready to melt on your warm toast or add richness to your favourite recipes. And that's how the delightful butter on your toast came into being. Until next time, keep spreading the buttery love.